Hello everyone. Uh, in this session, uh, we are going to show you two tutorials. It's on macronutrient, uh, macro, you know, so uh, as we know, macros are your carbohydrate, fat and protein, uh, extremely important protein and fats, good fats in the body. Uh, keep your carbohydrate low as much as possible. Uh, have more dals, have more uh, dahi, have more you know, protein rich food, uh, if you're non veg eggs and you know, non veg food, uh, seeds and nuts, uh, you can add in your diet. Uh, but that will keep your uh, insulin level kind of uh, steady, you know, uh, second tutorial is on basically nutrient count. So you know, a uh, lot of time we don't know how much carbohydrate we are taking, how much protein we are taking in day to day uh, food. So here what we have done, we have taken food that we eat on a regular basis, like rice, roti, you know, uh, <coughs> idli, dosa. And here, you know, uh, we have shown that uh, what is the macronutrient content of this foods, uh, not only macro, but also some iron, calcium. And then we've also shown that how you can combine foods so that it will improve the nutrient uh, density, okay? We want to have nutrient dense food, not just calorie rich food, okay? Uh, when you eat a lot of this rice and uh, wheat, those are very high uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, it lacks nutrients actually to be frank. They are, they are high calorie dense, uh, do not have any uh, uh, nutrient, uh, not so many nutrients. So what we end up eating is uh, predominantly carbohydrate in a diet. So do focus on protein intake, uh, keep your protein intake minimum one gram per kilogram uh, in your diet. Young children, they need much higher protein, okay, because their bones are growing, bones are 50% protein, okay. So uh, do enjoy both this tutorial, uh, watch them and share with your family, friends and with your patients. Thank you. Welcome to the spoken tutorial on the introduction to macronutrients. In this tutorial, we will learn about proteins, fats, carbohydrates. Macronutrients or macros are important nutrients. They include proteins, fats and carbohydrates. Let's learn more about each of these macros starting with proteins. The basic building blocks of protein are amino acids. When our body needs to make proteins, it joins amino acids together. This forms peptides. Peptides join together to form polypeptides. Polypeptides join together to form more complicated proteins. For example, they can form hair or muscle tissue. When we eat proteins, this process reverses. During digestion, we break down complex proteins. This forms small peptides and amino acids. Then we can use these amino acids to make new proteins as explained previously. Let's discuss some details of protein digestion. Protein digestion starts in the stomach with hydrochloric acid and pepsin. They begin breaking down proteins into polypeptides and single amino acids. These polypeptides and amino acids travel to the small intestine. There, polypeptides are further broken down by pancreatic enzymes. Amino acids and short peptides then cross the intestinal wall. They enter the bloodstream and then enter the cells. There they are used to synthesize new proteins. Some ingested amino acids and peptides are also delivered to the liver. There they are processed and distributed to other body cells. We constantly break down proteins and make new proteins. We cannot store protein. 
so we need to get enough protein from various food sources daily. Functions and daily requirements of protein are discussed in another tutorial. Now let's move on to fats. The basic building blocks of fat are fatty acids. Fats are made up of carbon and hydrogen joined together in long chains. These long chains are called hydrocarbons. The structure of the fat will affect how it behaves in our bodies. The level of saturation affects the structure of a fat. Saturation refers to the amount of hydrogen bonded to a hydrocarbon chain. The more hydrogens bonded, the more saturated the fat is. Saturated fats are found in coconut, milk, milk products, meat, etc. In such fats, hydrogens fill up all the available spots on the chain. However, if only some spots are filled with hydrogen, the fat is unsaturated. There are monounsaturated fats which have only one unsaturated carbon pair. More than 50% of the fat in peanuts is monounsaturated. About 60 to 80% of the fat in olives is monounsaturated. There are polyunsaturated fats which have multiple unsaturated carbon pairs. They are found in fish, walnuts, flax seeds, sunflower seeds, etc. To digest fat, the body breaks down fats into fatty acids and glycerol. This breakdown occurs mainly in the small intestine. Short and medium chain fatty acids are released into the blood directly. Long chain fatty acids are repackaged into particles called chylomicrons. Chylomicrons enter the lymphatic system and then into the blood stream. They are used for energy or converted into body fat for storage. Most dietary fat sources are a combination of saturated and unsaturated fats. This is good because we must eat a mix of fat types to be healthy. This balance comes naturally by eating a variety of whole, less processed foods. This includes nuts and seeds, dairy, eggs, fatty fish, meats, coconut, etc. You may notice that some of these foods are rich in saturated fats. Some of them even have cholesterol. This isn't a bad thing. We need cholesterol to live. A diet should include a variety of fats. This includes saturated, monounsaturated, omega-6 and omega-3 fats. Some fats should be minimized or eliminated from the diet. Trans fats from processed foods increase the risk of many diseases. Eating too much omega-6 and too less omega-3 fatty acids is harmful. The ideal ratio is 1 is to 1. Reusing polyunsaturated fats for deep frying can cause many diseases. More details about fats are discussed in another tutorial in the same series. Lastly, let's talk about carbohydrates. The basic building block of carbohydrates is the monosaccharide. Monosaccharides like glucose and fructose have one ring in their structure. Disaccharides like sucrose and lactose have two monosaccharides joined together. Polysaccharides have many monosaccharides joined together. They are also called complex carbohydrates. Examples are glycogen, starches and many types of soluble and insoluble fibers. They are found in beans, grains, foxtail millet, finger millet, vegetables, etc. We are always building up 
and breaking down carbohydrates. Simple starches and sugars break down into monosaccharides during digestion. For example, sucrose is broken down into glucose and fructose for absorption. Other carbohydrates like cellulose can't be broken down by the human body. Simple sugars can be joined together in the body. For example, glucose can become glycogen in our liver and muscles. Carbohydrates can also form other compounds in our bodies. The process of carbohydrate digestion begins the moment we put it in our mouth. There are enzymes in our saliva called amylases. They begin breaking down complex carbohydrates into smaller carbohydrate chains. Then the carbohydrates pass through the stomach to the small intestine. The pancreas secretes amylases. They break the smaller carbohydrate chains into disaccharides. These disaccharides are broken down into monosaccharides. For example, sucrose is broken down into glucose and fructose. Then they pass through intestinal cells into blood vessels. Then they are taken to the liver before they enter general circulation. The liver takes what it needs for energy transfer and glycogen storage. Then it sends the rest out as glucose into the blood. Cells take glucose from the blood with the help of insulin. Inside the cells, glucose is converted into energy. Muscle contraction also brings glucose into cells even without insulin. So, glucose uptake is usually better after exercise. This is why exercise helps keep us metabolically healthy. The body always tries to keep blood glucose levels stable. If blood sugar drops too low, the body will need a new glucose supply. Glucose can be made from carbohydrates in the food we eat. It can also be made by breaking down stored glycogen in the liver. This will stabilize blood glucose levels and provide immediate energy. If blood sugar goes too high, the liver and muscles will take up what they can. Sometimes the blood sugar is still too high after liver and muscle storage. Then the extra glucose is converted into body fat. In terms of quality, not all carbohydrates were created equal. Complex carbohydrates from whole foods keep us feeling full longer. They are naturally combined with other things in whole foods. Whole foods have micronutrients, phytonutrients, fiber, water, protein and fats. Therefore, whole foods release energy and glucose gradually in the body. They keep our blood sugar and insulin levels stable. The fiber in whole foods feeds our friendly gut bacteria. It also lowers cholesterol absorption and helps bowel movement. It is best to eat complex carbohydrates from whole foods. Simple, highly processed carbohydrates like biscuits and chips digest quickly. However, they tend to leave us unsatiated. They are not rich in nutrients. They have high amounts of sodium and industrial chemicals. They also have trans fats and preservatives. They tend to stimulate our appetite and leave us wanting more. They can cause fluctuations in our blood sugar and insulin levels. That means we can finish a whole packet of chips and still crave more. Even then, half an hour later, we are hungry. 
more information on junk food is available in other tutorials. Please visit our website for more details. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thank you for joining. Welcome to the spoken tutorial on the nutrient count of day-to-day -day food. In this tutorial, we will learn about importance of nutrition, nutrient count of some day-to-day -day food. Nutrition is important for good health. Essential nutrition is necessary from infancy for growth and development. It also helps to prevent malnutrition. Poor nutrition can lead to impaired mental and physical development. It can also lead to reduced immunity. Reduced immunity increases the risk of developing minor and chronic diseases. Nutrition related problems can be prevented by breastfeeding a baby. Remember that a baby should be breastfed within the first hour of its birth. Exclusive breastfeeding till 6 months with correct techniques is important. After 6 months along with breast milk, nutrient-dense food should be given. This nutrient-dense food is called complementary food. Complementary food should be rich in all the nutrients. Protein is one of the important nutrients. It helps in growth and development. Hence, it is advised to include protein-rich food sources in daily diet. Milk and milk products, beans, nuts and seeds are good sources of protein. Eggs, fish, chicken and meat are also excellent sources. Absorption of protein from non-vegetarian food is higher than vegetarian food. It is because non-vegetarian foods have complete proteins. Complete proteins contain all the essential amino acids. More about the importance of protein has been explained in another tutorial. Please visit our website for this tutorial. Let's take a look at the protein content of some of the food sources. 100 grams of fish has about 21 grams of protein. 250 milliliters of cow's milk has approximately 8 grams of protein. One whole egg has around 7 grams. 30 grams of soya bean has 11 grams. Whereas 30 grams of all raw pulses have around 4 grams of protein. Let us look at the nutrient count of some day-to-day -day food. Please note, one medium bowl mentioned in this tutorial is 150 milliliters. One tablespoon is 20 grams. The nutritive values mentioned are approximate values. I will briefly tell you the nutrient value of cooked rice. Half medium bowl of cooked rice has 22 grams of carbohydrates. It has only 2 grams of protein. It has 1 gram of fiber, 2 milligrams of calcium and no iron. Now, let's see the nutritional value of a common meal. For example, half medium size bowl of cooked rice with chicken curry. Half bowl chicken curry will have 100 grams of boneless chicken or 4 small pieces. Another example is half medium size bowl of curd rice. Half medium bowl of Curd rice will have 100 grams of curd. Protein increases up to 10 times when cooked rice is taken with half bowl chicken curry. It increases iron from 
0 to 1 milligram. When combined with 100 grams of curd, protein increases to 3 grams. There is a 100 times rise in calcium content. Similarly, cooked rice with half bowl kidney beans curry will have 4 times more protein. Half bowl of kidney beans curry will have 30 grams of kidney beans. Fiber will increase to 7 grams and iron to 2 milligrams. When combined with half bowl of fish curry, protein increases from 2 to 24 grams. Half bowl fish curry will have 100 grams of fish or 2 small pieces. It increases calcium from 2 to 45 milligrams. Similarly, half bowl of prawns curry increases protein from 2 to 16 grams. Half bowl of prawns curry will have 50 grams or 3 to 4 pieces of prawns. Calcium increases to 47 milligrams from 2 milligrams. Half bowl of lentils with cooked rice increases protein up to 6 times. Half bowl lentils will have 30 grams of lentils. Fiber increases to 11 grams and iron to 2 milligrams. Now, I will tell you the nutritive value of one chapati made from wheat. A 6 inch chapati has around 16 grams of carbohydrates and 3 grams of protein. It has around 3 grams fiber, 9 milligrams calcium and 1 milligram iron. When consumed with 2 scrambled eggs, the protein increases to 16 grams. Iron improves to 3 milligrams and calcium to 69 milligrams. Chapati with half bowl of Bengal gram curry raises protein from 3 grams to 9 grams. Half bowl of Bengal gram curry will have 30 grams of Bengal gram. Fiber increases to 11 grams and iron to 5 milligrams. Let us now see the nutritive value of chapati with Sesame and flaxseed chutney. 1 tablespoon sesame and flaxseed chutney increases the protein to 7 grams. It increases the fiber to 8 grams. There is a 100 times rise in calcium. Half bowl of goat liver curry with chapati increases the iron content by 6 times. Half bowl of liver curry will have 60 to 70 grams of goat liver. The protein increases to 20 times. We will now look at the nutrient count of idli. 3 idlis of 3 inches has 18 grams of carbohydrates and 3 grams of protein. They have 2 grams fiber, 7 milligrams calcium and 0 0.5 mg iron. Let us see how sambar and sesame peanut chutney improves the nutrient count. Half bowl of thick sambar will have 30 grams of split pigeon pea. Half medium bowl of thick sambar with idli doubles the protein content. It increases Calcium by 30 times. 1 tablespoon sesame peanut chutney increases protein to 7 grams. It improves the calcium to 44 milligrams. Next, we will look at the nutrient count of dosa. 1 dosa of 6 inches has around 18 grams of carbohydrates and 3 grams of protein. It has 2 grams fiber, 9 milligrams calcium and 0.6 milligram iron. 
adding one egg while making dosa increases protein by 4.5 times. It improves iron to 1 mg. Eating dosa with half bowl chicken curry increases protein to 21 grams. Half bowl chicken curry will have 100 grams of boneless chicken or 4 small pieces. 1 tablespoon sesame peanut chutney increases protein to 7 grams. It also increases calcium from 9 to 108 milligrams. Next is the nutrient count of upma. Half bowl of upma has around 18 grams carbohydrates and 4 grams protein. It has 3 grams of fiber, 12 milligrams calcium and 1 milligram iron. On combining with 1 tablespoon coconut curd chutney, fiber increases to 6 grams. Protein increases to 7 grams. Calcium increases to 42 milligrams. 1 tablespoon sesame peanut chutney with upma increases the protein to 7 grams. It improves fiber to 5 grams. The calcium increases by 90 times. 1 glass of lassi with a pinch of salt increases the protein to 7 grams. 1 glass lassi will have 50 grams curd. Calcium increases to 131 milligrams. Moving on to the nutrient count of sorghum roti. A 6 inch sorghum roti has 17 grams of carbohydrates and 3 grams of protein. It has 3 grams of fiber, 8 milligrams of calcium and 1 milligram of iron. Let us see the nutritive value of sorghum roti with sesame and flaxseed chutney. 1 tablespoon sesame and flaxseed chutney raises calcium to 123 milligrams. There is an increase in fiber up to 6 grams. Sorghum roti with half bowl chicken curry improves the protein to 21 grams. Recipes for most of these food items are discussed in other tutorials. It is advised to combine two or three food groups in a meal. Combine seeds, nuts and beans in a meal to improve the nutritional quality. For example, adding seeds and coconut paste to chickpea curry. Adding roasted seeds powder in idli batter is another example. It is also advised to apply curd or lemon to non-vegetarian food. It adds flavor and makes the meat tender. It is also suggested to include lassi or buttermilk with your meals. This will enhance probiotics, protein and calcium in your meals. It also aids in digestion. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thanks for joining.